Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Maddie, and in this video, I'm going to be covering everything you need to know about portals. Portals are one of my favorite features in Remnote. There are just so many use cases for them. So I'm going to go over their behavior, how to make them, how they work, and how you can use them in your own workflow. Let's get started. So what are portals? Portals allow you to embed Rem inside of another Rem. It's a single piece of content that you can include in multiple Rem, and any edits that you make to that one Rem will be shown in all of them. I think the best way for me to show you is with some demonstrations. So to make portals, use two open parentheses signs. So I'll type in two open parentheses here to bring up the portal search box. It looks very similar to the reference search box with the magnifying glass, but just notice how it says portal here. I can search through my entire knowledge base and embed any REM I want to, whether that's a parent or a child. So let's say that today I'm in emergency medicine class and we're learning about ACLS or advanced cardiac life support. And I've already learned about cardiac arrest previously, but not from the perspective of emergency medicine. So maybe I want to add additional information to cardiac arrest, but I don't want to have to make a whole new section for it. So I can use a portal. So I'll portal in cardiac arrest. Anytime you insert a portal into your document, it's going to have this light blue box around it. That just means it's in a portal. If you click away from editing this rem, the blue box disappears, but it still has this faint light blue line on the left, just to make sure you know there's a portal. This is just to keep the workspace clean and more focused. So cardiac arrest is just another rem in my knowledge base that I've embedded in this document. And any changes I make in this document is going to be reflected in every single document that cardiac arrest is in. Just to show an example here, I'm going to open up cardiac arrest in a second pane so we can see the behavior. And I'm going to do that by holding shift and left clicking on cardiac arrest to open it up in a second pane. I'm going to expand it in this document too so we can see everything over here. So any edits that I make in the cardiac arrest rem will also be shown in the other portal. So I'm just going to type in one, two, three, four, five, and you can see that those edits were made in both of these documents here. To the right of every portal, you might also see this number here. This number represents any time that I've ever used this rem in another portal as a reference or as a tag. You can go ahead and click on it just to view all those options here. So I've referenced cardiac arrest seven times in my knowledge base, and it's also included in three other portals. Similar to how you can rearrange your rem by clicking and dragging or outdenting and indenting or moving them up and down, you can also do that with the entire portal itself. To do that, I'm going to go to my portal and I'm going to move my arrow until the portal turns yellow. Now I can indent this entire portal if I want to using tab, or I can shift tab to outdent it, and all up and down will actually move the entire portal up and down as well. So that's how you can make a portal in your document using the two open parentheses. Now let's go into some of the other features of portals that make them even stronger. So as I mentioned, portals allow you to embed REM inside of another REM, like I've done here with cardiac arrests. You can also portal in children of REM without disrupting the hierarchy of that REM. For example, I'm going to make a child of this REM here called Heartbreaker. And I just want to portal in Heartbreaker without the parent cardiac arrest or this 50-year-old patient had cardiac arrest vignette here. So I'm just going to use the two open parentheses to bring in a portal. I'll type in Heartbreaker. Can't spell. And I can click on this. As you can see, only Heartbreaker was portaled or embedded in this rem, not the entire chain. However, if you click on the editor of Heartbreaker, you'll see that the portal toolbar shows up, and it shows the hierarchy of where that rem came from. And if you decide you want to include the parents, you can go ahead and click on the parents just to include them. I'm going to undo that just for another example. You can also view all the hidden rem in the original document by clicking on the eyeball icon here. As you can see, I have two hidden rem under this rem right here, and you can add them or just view them if you want. I already talked about how you can add any information you want into the cardiac arrest rem, and it'll be shown in all of the cardiac arrest documents or portals. The next thing is that you can actually generate an in-document queue using a portal. I'll demonstrate that here by adding this rem, and if you click on the six dot icon in the portal toolbar, you'll see an option to turn into an embedded queue. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and click on switch to view mode. And you'll see that it actually generates an in-document queue that you can study from and apply space repetition to. 
and you can just switch back to the portal by clicking on it again. The toolbar also allows you to copy all the portal contents if you want to paste it somewhere else or just delete the portal. And the last feature of portals I want to mention here is that you can use them to create top level REM. Top level REM have their own separate video, but I'm just going to quickly go over it right here what I mean. So I can use the two open parentheses to create a portal and I'm actually going to create a new REM here. I'm just going to call this one, two, three, four, five and create REM. So what I've just done here, instead of finding a REM that I already made, I just created a new one, which is why it's tagged with stub. It's a top level REM, meaning that the highest level of hierarchy is one, two, three, four, five, not portals, right? Because I embedded it in this document. If I hold shift and left click one, two, three, four, five, you'll see that there's no breadcrumb trail, meaning it's a top level REM. I'll quickly finish off this video with some examples of how I would use portals in my own workflow. So let's say that I'm in biology class, cell biology, and I'm going to open up this as a document by clicking on that REM. So in lecture one, we're learning about the shape of DNA. So DNA, and the shape of DNA is a double helix, helix shape. It's a really short class, and that's all we learn about in this lecture. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse lecture one. So tomorrow's lecture, which is lecture two, we're now learning about the structure of DNA. So I'm just going to open up lecture two by clicking on it. And today we learned that DNA is made up of bases. We have purines and pyrimidines. So instead of making a new REM for DNA, since I already did that in lecture one, I want to add on to that information because it's all related. So I'm just going to use a portal. I'm going to use two open parentheses to bring in DNA. You can see that I brought in DNA from the cell biology lecture. And we're just going to add DNA is made of purines and pyrimidines. I can still view all that information from lecture one, which is denoted by this hidden eyeball, but I don't have to add it to my lecture two notes. And this allows me to keep lecture two focused on the structure of DNA and lecture one on the shape of DNA. But all of the notes for DNA are still nested under this one DNA portal. All right, everyone, that is everything I want to mention about portals. Hopefully I've convinced you on how powerful they are. And I will see you in the next video.